Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to This is Maria. Today, we're continuing the conversation about pair chakras, and we're going to dive into our feminine pair, which is the third eye and the sacral. Um, I, yeah, I'm excited to dive deep. And before we get started, just a quick announcement. Um, my second book is out there for pre-order. Um, the book is called The Rose Codes, Book of Initiations. It is a labor of love. Uh, it's taken me two years to write it. And it's um, it's very different. It's all about the feminine energies. If you've been seeking to connect with the Divine Mother, if you've been seeking to reconnect with the gentler, tender, feminine parts of yourself, that book can be such a beautiful initiation journey. There is a reason why it's called the Book of Initiations. It's because a lot of the first steps that you would make on the journey of reconnecting with the Mother are really through that book. It dives into things like sacred geometry from the Flower of Life to you know, the platonic solids. Um, and, you know, that is kind of like the foundations, but it also talks about uh, the magic of the dome shape, which is a feminine py pyramid. It talks about the magic of the circle, how you can build the circles. And it talks um, about other things, but of course, because it is called the Rose Codes, it dives very, very deeply into sacred florals and how you can leverage the power of the rose in your life to reconnect with the feminine inside. So I hope that you join me for that very special journey into your inner femininity through the Book of the Rose. All right, my darlings, why don't we uh, dive a little bit deeper into the paired, our female pair of chakras, the third eye and the sacral. In my previous video on this topic, I gave a little bit of an overview, but I will provide a quick one here again. As we are regarding the seven chakras, our main seven chakras that are located along our spine, one way to look at these chakras is um, from the perspective of them coming in pairs. Now, the heart chakra does not have a pair outside of maybe thinking that the lower heart and the higher, uh, the higher heart are a paired chakra which is a valid way of looking at it. Um, but then in that case, they still merge, right? Like in the ideal world, you would have one merged heart space. Then you have a pair that we already looked at, which is the masculine pair, the solar plexus and the throat. And the next one over is the third eye and the sacral. And how do you know that the chakras are paired is essentially you would think of your heart chakra as that middle point, right? That middle ground uh, for your energy body, the point of convergence, if you will, um, of the minor and major chakras. And if you move one chakra up and one chakra down, that's your first pair, the masculine pair. If you move two chakras up and two chakras down from the from the heart, that is going to be your second pair. And then if you move three chakras up and three chakras down, that's your third pair. And these are the paired chakras. Paired chakras always share a connective, a connected or connect collective space. They are essentially borrowing from the same source. So because these two chakras, your sacral that lives in your womb area or in, you know, in, in your lower belly, if you are the guy, you don't have a womb. Um, and you know, for your third eye, right? Both of, both of these chakras, your sacral and your third eye, you initially borrow from your mother's lineage and your mom's side, right? So when you're growing up um, and um, you know, when, when you just come in, into an incarnation, both of these chakras are going to be an exact copy paste of your mother's like uh, lineage and, and her energies. So essentially your sacral is going to be just as open, just as healthy as your mother's. And your third eye is going to be just as um, sacral and so, sorry, just as healthy and just as open as your mother's as well. That's why, for instance, psychic abilities very often run in lineages and witches, right? Like, you know, there is a reason why very often, you know, uh, women would pass on things to women. It is, you know, a little bit easier, all, all things considered, for women to open up their third eyes is because it's easier for women to connect to the feminine energies in the same way that it is easier for men to connect to the masculine energies. That is completely normal. And so, you know, if your mother was a psychic, 
it's the chances of her daughter being a psychic are quite high because again, psychic, I mean, outside of the, you know, the energies of the heart being very strong, but the energies of the third eye are very, very op open usually because it's your third eye that connects you to the general broader informational field. And so very often psychic mothers are going to have psychic daughters, psychic grandmothers, you know, uh, are going to have psychic uh, granddaughters uh, and so on and so forth, right? So magic runs in the lineages and your third eye and the, the ability of borrowing energies from the third eye center is very much a precursor to that. So the beautiful energies of the sacral and the beautiful energies of the third eye. I love these two chakras. They are stunning. The way I like to visualize these are like oceans. So you have an orange ocean in your um, in your lower belly area, and you have your violet ocean in the area of your third eye in the middle of your forehead. Um, both of these chakras feel like water to me. So um, very often it is, you know, it is the harmonization of our own waters that is required um, before these two chakras can really come into balance, can really come into their power. Let us quickly uh, dig in into what both of these chakras are responsible for, and then we're going to talk about how they're interconnected, but you're going to find a lot, a lot of similarities. Um, so the one way to think about these two chakras are your lower waters and your high waters. What are your lower waters? Lower doesn't mean inferior, by the way, and higher doesn't mean superior. I just wanted to say. Um, there is really no such thing because, for instance, if your lower waters are not active um, or are closed down, like, and th that means that your energy, uh, your energy would very often be rising from the bottom to the to the upper chakras, right? If your sacral is not operational, there is no way your third eye is going to be operational, right? So both need to be intact in order for you to be healthy, in order for you to be happy, in order for you to be balanced, and in order for you to feel like, like th the fullness of what you're meant to feel, right? Both need to be operational. Not, not One is not inferior. The only reason I'm calling them the lower waters is because literally, locationally in your body, they are lower and the other waters are higher. But there's still the waters, like the depth. Like you have a lot of depth in each of these centers. That's why I'm, I'm naming them an ocean. I'm calling them an ocean. And so going down to your sacral center, this is your center of sensuality. This is your center of sexuality. This is where your reproductive system is, right? So this is your center of life in many ways. Um, this is your center of creation and creativity, right? Artistry even, right? The artist archetype lives in, lives in here, like the painter, the dancer, the singer, all of that, right? Like self-expression that is artistic lives here. A lot of healing energies live here. Now, a lot of healing energies also live in the heart, uh, but there are a lot of healing energies in the sacral. Your primary a relationship to abundance lives in um, in the center because your feminine energies are responsible for drawing things to you. And so um, the waters of the sacral chakra are very magnetic. It's usually these waters that are going to be in their most receptive and these waters that are really attracting things to you and magnetizing things to you that you are a vibrational match to. Um, so sacral is very, very beautiful. And your third eye is your seat of wisdom. It's your ocean of wisdom. Um, your third eye has a connection to your subconscious. It is. It has the connection into the realm of Akasha or the larger informational field of the universe. So it knows things. It feels things. It perceives things. It is an incredible perception Field. It's an incredible perception center. Um, it is a center of telepathy as well, um, by the way, right? Uh, being able to read the room, being able to understand what's happening. Although very often it also works with the heart center, in, in, you know, uh, which is another center of receptivity. Um, but again, heart is just like such a standalone um, that, you know, it probably deserves its own episode uh, within this context. But again, uh, the beauty of, of the two centers, the sacral and the third eye, is that it's, you know, it's, um, it's your inner waters. And I find that connecting them into one cohesive stream 
is very, very helpful. Now, we didn't do that with the previous pair of chakras, uh, which is the third eye and the throat. Now, they are located closer to one another. Uh, these two chakras, the third eye and the sacral, are really far removed in your body. And that's why I find it paramount to connect these two inner waters so you can merge your inner femininity. So here is an exercise that I always recommend when you're trying to merge two energy centers. And by the way, through that, both of these energies are going to become stronger for you. You're going to really enable one of them to heal the other. Now, there is already an innate and inherent connection between these two energies. So usually if your third eye, sorry, if your sacral is locked or blocked, your third eye is going to be blocked and vice versa, right? If you're not able to see, that means that there's something in your sacral that's preventing you from seeing. Maybe it's a traumatic experience. Maybe you've numbed or uh, that center down, right? But like they are interconnected. And there's like a French uh, expression, chercher la femme, like uh, find a look for the woman or find the woman. It's it's like, you know what the culprit is, right? Like if, if you have issues around opening your third eye, first deal with what's in your lower waters. Deal with your sacral, right? Because it's like those are the two seats of feminine energy within your body and they must be interconnected. They are interconnected. Like your inner and your upper waters are always interconnected. And so if you're looking to bring them into one cohesive, coherent whole, what I recommend is the figure eight to connect the two of them. So you would imagine that in your heart space is the middle part of the figure eight, the, the part where the two loops meet. And you would start with the upper loop, drawing like a loop of the, the figure eight around your third eye, and then going down into your body and drawing the bottom loop of the figure eight around your sacral and meeting in the heart space again. And then you would want to draw that figure eight again, and you would want to do it a few times, right? in order to draw this new pathway of connection. And of course, as you're moving down the figure eight from the third eye, you want to imagine the waters that are descending uh, would be the purple waters or the violet waters, right? And then, you know, the waters are going to be ascending and are going to be the orange waters, right? So like on the ascension loop of the eight, you're going to see the orange waters. And on, on the descent, you're going to see the purple. You would also notice, right, that the more you do the figure eight, the more your clairvoyance opens up and the more you're able to read the Akashic records, right? And it is because, I mean, obviously, you know that in order for you to open up your heart, uh, you know, top centers, um, a version of the upward energy movement that, you know, a lot of uh, people in East refer to as the Kundalini rising or the Shakti rising or the energy rising, right? Like, you know, that is one way that your higher centers can get activated. Another way would be to specifically allow your sacral to activate your third eye through the loop of the eight, right? Now, for that, you know, um, for that to happen, though, your own orange center needs to be harmonized. The violet uh, center, the third eye, doesn't take kindly to energies that are polluted. And you would notice that with higher chakras. Like your lower chakras are a lot more able to handle the shadow. Whereas with the higher chakras, in the shadow aspect of high, I mean, obviously the, the shadow exists in every single chakra, but your higher centers would have a natural resistance to taking in negative energy from the surroundings if they are in a more purified state. So what I'm saying is this, if you have a lot of trauma and if you're operating from the shadow aspect of your um, uh, sacral, your third eye is not going to want to take up those energies because those are not the pure um, energies. And so you would do best to actually start the healing of this chakral pair with your sacral. And that means uh, dealing with any of the trauma around sexuality, whatever those experiences were in this life or the past life. And, uh, you know, sexuality and the reproductive system, there's so much here, right? The trauma about, you know, around motherhood, the trauma around fatherhood, the trauma around being a parent, and even the trauma around being a kid is also here. So a lot of those kind of like things that you'd rather not deal with live in this in this orange ocean and so doing a detox of your sacral um it is very very important and one way to do that is not dissimilar to how i gave you the the cleanse um 
you know, uh, like the cleansing practice in um, in an episode about the previous chakra pair. But essentially, you would drop into, you would descend into, in a meditative state, you would descend into your sacral area, and you would imagine that there is, uh, it's raining essentially. And there is this beautiful orange ocean, and the rain of light is coming down upon that ocean. And it would allow the raindrops to become larger and larger and larger. And then you would shift your focus to the very bottom of that ocean, to the ocean floor. And you would notice how this white rain that's coming straight from the heavens is essentially penetrating all throughout the depth of this orange ocean, cleansing and removing any of the darkness, any of the dirt, any of the debris, and taking that darkness into the cracks in the in the soil underneath the ocean or the, you know, the earth underneath the ocean. And just allow that darkness, dirt, debris to sip through and be evacuated out of that beautiful ocean of who you are of what you are right so like that detox is very very important i also find that the spiral is a very healing presence now the spiral is one of the core movements of the divine mother and so when you're working working with the divine feminine energies working with a spiral can be exceptionally healing so if you want to heal clear you know your feminine centers working with a spiral could be beautiful in this case you can use a pink spiral you can use a gold spiral you can use you know if there is another color that you resonate with that is also wonderful so you would imagine that there is a spiral that is starting to rotate right right around your um sacral chakra kind of like moving in and out of that chakra creating momentum and that movement alone is going to create the cleanse in that part of your body, in that area of your body. And then I also recommend you do a paired spiral in your third eye. And so you want both spirals in parallel, kind of like moving in and out of your forehead. And um, you want to synchronize the two spirals to each other, meaning you know, their uh, spin is going to be exactly the same, right? They're going to be spinning in exactly the same way. And you would notice how it really helps tune up those two chakras to one another. That also enables one to benefit from the other uh, big time. Now, of course, when you're working with um, these energies, healing your relationship with your mother um, could be a wonderful step forward. Anytime I propagate uh, healing a relationship with one of your parents, there are always people who are so deeply hurt by their parents that they think I'm a bad guy for even suggesting this. And if you are the one that has undergone something terrible and you really suffered from the hands of your parent, please know that I empathize with you. And please know that if you choose to not do the work around healing your mother wound in this lifetime, eventually there will be the time for you to do that. Eventually you're going to face up, you know, um, you know, and step up to that occasion. Does it mean that it has to be this lifetime? Absolutely not. It is up to you. But you would be surprised how much healing your relationship with your mother is going to help you heal these two centers if that relationship is optimal. Now, uh, on the flip side, you may have a terrific relationship with your mother, and she may be a wonderful woman, and one or both of these centers can still be suboptimal. Usually it is because your chakras, her and yours, um, are either operating, you know, either they're underactive, they could be overactive, or they can be, um, you, know, you know, essentially operating in the shadow. And what I mean in the shadow, the shadow can, can cause something to be overactive. It can cause something to be underactive. It depends on the flavor of that shadow. So maybe let's talk about some of the shadow aspects of these two chakras so you understand. Somebody who has repressed sensuality, right, who is not um, like able to uh, dive into that part of, of reality, right, uh, could have an underactive or a blocked chakra. Somebody who has a, uh, um, a strange relationship with pleasure. Usually it's souls that either had to like live a lot of the lives of, you know, ascesis or like when they essentially, when they either were deprived of things like foods, right? Uh, because actually your love of foods live, lives in the center, like your love of anything beautiful, 
whether that is beautiful surroundings, beautiful furniture that also lives uh, lives in your sacral because your sacral is really um, a Venusian chakra, right? Uh, the chakra connected to the planet Venus. So all things beautiful, all, all things harmonious would go there, right? But like, say you you have your soul had a life of a monk many times over or a nun or, you know, just like a life where you specifically chose to, uh, you know, commit to certain ideals. And so you renounced pleasure to some degree, right? Beautiful lives, nothing against that. That is a beautiful experience to have, a very enlightening experience. But to some degree, you're denying your lower chakras in favor of the growth in your higher chakras. And that is a beautiful path. But at the same time, it could create a lot of trauma and a lot of condensed, unhealed energies in your uh, sacral. And so you come into this life and you're like no longer a monk or no longer a nun, but that part of your body may be underactive, right? So like that could be an example of like why a particular chakra is underactive. Of course, you know, any type of, um, you know, sexual trauma would also uh, in, like make the chakra be underactive. It's like, for instance, um, you know, a woman that has experienced rape may clo completely close down the chakra because she doesn't want to look or feel sexy so as not to attract attention. Uh, and, you know, that could be another form. Um, if you deny your creative spark, if you deny your artist, in the, the artist inside of you, if you don't think of yourself as creative or a creator or creatress, um, that could be um, a shadow aspect of uh, the sacral. If you are extremely active, right, like the the starving artist archetype, by the way, is the shadow aspect of the sacral. It is the artist that denies certain realities, right? That's why they're starving and denies certain values like, oh, I don't need the money as long as I have my craft. Now, it is a absolutely a path that souls choose to undertake. And there is nothing wrong with whichever path, path you choose, right? Every path is beautiful in its own right. Every path is a happening. Every path is um, a lesson. Every path is an experience, right? But if you, if your sacral is healed and operating properly, you will never align with a starving artist. You would align with a thriving artist archetype. That is the healed sacral. Same thing around like beautifying things and harmonizing things, right? So like a healed sacral would make other things and other people around it better and not worse. It is like that natural healer. Somebody that has a healing touch very often has beautiful sacral energies because again, your sacral is your connection to water. So if you're looking to heal your feminine chakras, you dive into water. And I, I don't just mean physical water, but like activating the water element, working with that water element. Yes, swimming, diving, anything you can do with water, charging your water, blessing your water, all of those things. In the same way that if you're looking to shift the energy in your solar plexus and your throat, the masculine chakras, you work with the element of fire. You cleanse whatever karma you have with the element of fire. And by the way, okay, the element of water. There's so much, you guys karma on the face of planet earth that has to do with water and a lot of it is because of pollution the pollution uh of like all of the things that go into the rivers and all of the things that go into the ocean so if you don't think you have terrible karma with water that may not still be the case like something in the ancestral line somebody was polluting the water in your, you know in you know in your neighborhood or the factories in in your hometown that may still come back to you so doing a um, a ritual where you um, essentially give an offering to a, a natural body of water with gratitude and expressing, you know, um, essentially asking the water for forgiveness for, you know, advertently or inadvertently polluting it uh, could be could be healing. Now, there's a little bit of a pushback of like, well, I never pollute the water. When you guys wash the dishes, the water is here to cleanse all the grime from those plates. Even if it is your dishwasher that's washing your dishes, who is absorbing all the schmuck <laughs> from your plates? Water. Do you think water wants to absorb it? I mean, not necessarily, but it has to. And that is one way that you're polluting water and you're not even conscious of it, right? We're not even going to have a bathroom conversation right now. What goes down the drain in, in, like, in, in your toilets and stuff? Because that is also polluting water, I'm just saying.
Um, so that being said, right, like changing a relationship with water is going to completely optimize your your two feminine chakras, right? Let's quickly talk about the third eye. Um, the underactive third eye is going to result in you not being able to see things. It's going to result in you being able to not, you know, you're going to have a hard time in, you know, with energy practices, with meditations, you're going to have a hard time um, kind of like predicting the future. You're going to have a hard time, you know, connecting to the Akashic records. You're going to have a hard time reading people. Like if we take it a notch down, right? Like you're not going to be able to really sense people all that well understand what you know you can expect from somebody that uh, all of these are examples of an underactive third eye but um again because this is a higher chakra obviously it, it has its intricacies right it's not you would usually not find quite as much trauma uh, specifically in the third eye as you would in the heart center and below right because that is where a lot of your earthly trauma that is where a lot of the energy some optimal energy of, of your lineage goes. But third eye is usually, you know, when it's underactive, that means that not enough energy has even gone up to this part of your body, right? And again, in order to activate your higher waters, your higher ocean, you go into the lower ocean first, clean it up, and then you can do the figure eight. Okay, I'll take one question from the collective around this. Whatever is going to serve the listeners, I'm here to receive the question. The question is, I feel like my mom has a really, really healthy sacral, but I really don't. And you just said that I borrow these energies from my mother. So how come? Okay. Uh, when you first come into an incarnation, um, those energies that you borrow into these two chakras are copy-paste. Now, you also bring a certain frequency with you when you descend into a body. So essentially, you are an energetic imprint of your the stream from your higher self as well as your mom's energy and your father's energy, right? Like you are uh, a trifecta. Um, so the reason that you could be experiencing this is because you may have brought with you an energy from a past life that is somehow not entirely connected or explains what your mother had, and you got yourself a hybrid, right? And so your perception may be that your energy is suboptimal compared to your mother. But the good news is, if your mother has an amazing relationship with her sacral center, you still have a portion of that, no matter what, regardless of your own traumatic experiences from the past. And of course, in this lifetime, you also accumulate experiences. You may have aligned with an experience or a trauma that has shifted temporarily, may I add, the energies in that center. So that could be another reason why your personal energy in a particular center may not be reflective of your mother's energy. And the third thing that I'm going to say is this. Unless you live in somebody else's body, it's really hard for you to judge what is healthy and what is unhealthy about them. Because, you know, your parents, as well as other people, can have so many defense mechanisms, so many masks, and so many layers to every energy that they carry that something may come across really, really healthy, but not be so from, you know, once you actually start peeling off the layers. So don't make assumptions. And very often it is a good predictor. Like if you have a problem in a particular energy center, most likely your lineage does too. The good news is once you start healing yourself, um, your connection to your lineage is a two-way street, right? The energy just doesn't just flow in one way and stays there. Everything is an energy exchange. If your lineage gives you something, guess what? You're going to have to give it back. When you die, where do you think your, your energy goes? Into ether? No, it goes back to your lineage, right? So if you heal something within yourself when you die, not to get morbid over here, but it's going to go to your lineage. And by the way, it's also going to go to your kid right? If you heal something. So you're going to pass that as a forward stream to your child and you're going to pass that on as a backward moving stream back to your lineage, right? So by healing yourself, you quite literally heal the lineage because you ain't going to be here forever. 
And so that energy that you have right now, the energy that you have right now is borrowed from your lineage and is borrowed from Mother Gaia for the time being as you're going through this beautiful experience as a soul that has a body. The body is the one part that is going to have to go back into nature. That is completely normal. And then your immortal spirit soul complex is going to go up you know, uh, to meet your back up with your higher self, right? That is the part that you carry with you. The aspects that you're going to carry back with you are the experiences, right? But you're going to give up and you're going to give back a lot of the energies, right? And that is the energy exchange. So don't worry too much for this particular exercise about trying to fix, quote unquote, your lineage. Fix yourself, that'll fix the lineage. All right, my darlings. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this conversation about payer chakras. Um, you know, if you have questions, please drop them in, um, you know, um, if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, loves.